Hello all, in this tutorial we are going to compare the performance of software based processing with the DMA based uh, image processing. Uh, the technique used here for performance measurement is not only applicable to this DMA based system but you can use it for profiling any application whether it is purely software based, purely hardware based or a mix of software and hardware. So since I am planning to compare both software and hardware performance, uh, I will bring the code for software-based filtering. So we already have it, which is this one. So I'm copy pasting this code to my existing code. This is the one we developed last time for hardware-based image filtering. So I'm copy pasting that code for software-based processing also so that I can compare it in the same SDK project. Now the standard way of uh, doing performance measurement in C programming is something like this. So we will include a header file called time.h and you will have to declare two data actually both of them are of type clock underscore t this is a predefined data type which is stored in time data sheet so the basic idea is uh, before you are processing you will measure what is the current time and after the processing you will again measure what is the time and you find the difference between them they will basically tell you how long the execution takes okay so simple idea so here if i want to measure the execution time for this part what i will do is start equal to clock and i will write end equal to clock so i'll get the current time here a starting time i'll get the end time here and i can simply print uh, print processing time percentage f and minus start divided by clocks per second again clocks per second is a constant again defined in time dot h which basically tells how many clock cycles are the per second from the processor point of view. So this will basically tell me how many clock cycles the processor took to do this operation. Now if I know the frequency at which the processor is running, I can use that information to get the XR time, the wall clock time. Okay, so that's how we do it in the standard C program. Now, unfortunately, if you compile this code, you are going to get an error here and okay that is because of my print so this is floating points so i have to use print a function okay so here you are going to get an error like undefined reference to underscore times so this is coming from the header file the xilinx code somewhere in time.h this uh, is coming from this header file and that you cannot solve right i don't know maybe in the new version of sdk this may be working so you have to check it out so instead of this standard way what i am going to do is a very specific way for z so the ps part inside the zinc chip it has built-in timer and zinc has many timers uh, there is a global timer which is a 64-bit timer. There are other timers called the SCU timers, snoop control unit timers. So each processor core has separate SCU timers. They are 32-bit timers. Then there are something called uh, triple timer counter blocks. There are two of them and each of them has three 16-bit timer and counter. So we can use any of them depending upon the purpose. Now the easiest one is to use the global timer and the advantage is the you don't have to do any special initialization for the global timer uh, 
because it is common for both processor core and 64 bit that means the time that you can measure is quite large maybe uh, more than the life of the universe so you really don't have to worry about whether the timer will overflow because it reaches the maximum value things like that you know for 32 bit timer that issue may not happen but if you are using 16 bit timer the TTC timer this may happen so for more details about this timers and counter you have to refer to the TRM technical reference manual of uh, Zing there you can find the details so here I am directly going to use the global timer now if you want to use global timer you will have to include this header file xtime underscore l dot h that is a header file and you can see like it's it's quite small and there are only two functions one function is to set the timer if you want to change the value in the global timer you can do it or if you just want to get the current time in the global timer you can use the get time so this function is enough for us so in fact our previous uh, high level function the clock function it is supposed to use this low level function to get the current value from the global timer so I, I really don't know why it is not happening another interesting thing you can see a constant here counts per second is declared here as x per cpu cortex clock frequency hertz divided by 2 so this timer is running at the half frequency of the processor so if processor is at 67 megahertz it is just running at uh, half of it around 333 megahertz so you can see that constant is also declared here okay so the code will look very similar to what we wrote before but instead of using the clock function we are going to use the function x time get time that get takes one parameter of type x time and a pointer and if you see this is just a type of to u64 okay so x time is same as an unsigned integer 64 bit so this function is going to return that value only thing is it is not returning uh, you have to pass a pointer to a variable of this time and that value will be updated with the current value in the global timer so let's come back here and instead of time dot h we include x time underscore l dot h and instead of the start and end we will declare variables but they should be of type x time or u64 any of them so let's declare them x time start and end and uh, here instead of writing start equal to clock you have to write get time and you have to pass the address of start instead of writing start equal to get time same way for end you will write x time get time ampersand end and processing time is percentage f and minus start divided by clocks per second and uh, it's here it is written as counts per second okay so let's use that okay so this is going to return the time in seconds which may be very small value and let's print the value in microsecond because we are going to use hardware processing also which is quite fast so if you directly print it in a second it may be a very small value so let me directly convert it into microsecond by multiplying by 10 to the power of 6 and we are expecting a floating point number so these are unsigned integers so to get a floating point number at least one of the operands should be floating point so let me type it as 10 to the power of 6.0 so that he converts it into a float yes that's it now implicit declaration okay so at this time i have to use xdio.touch because previously it was declared or included in the time touch so i guess it was automatically included and this time we have to explicitly include it okay that's it so 
another thing I am going to do is I just want to measure the time for uh, computation. I don't want to measure the time for data transfer. Okay, for this particular application, maybe for another application you want to measure the time for computation. So of course you can do it, but this time I want to measure the time for computation only because the time for transferring is same for both software and hardware so it's not giving me any special information uh, in this particular case i really don't know or don't care about the correctness of my computation because i have already checked it uh, the logic is working fine so i really don't want to transfer an image from the computer to the board and spend time on it similarly i don't want to send uh, the image from board to the computer and waste more time so what i will do is i will comment out this part which is used for sending data from computer to the board similarly i will comment out this part which is used for sending data from board to the computer now following same style you can measure the time required for hardware processing also so here let's write uh, processing time for software is this much so same style i can use for hardware also okay so this is where hardware processing starts and this is where it finishes so i have the same code here and time for hardware that's it so compile and we can directly run it i already have the run configuration from my previous project i have set up my teratum i'm directly running it and because i commented out the part for sending image i should be directly seeing the result here and this is the result so you can see processing time for software uh, this is in microsecond if you wish we can add that anyway microsecond microsecond so the time record for software is this much microsecond time record for hardware is this much microsecond so if i take the ratio 6471 divided by 464 you'll see like hardware is approximately 14 times faster than software for this particular application now if you increase the image size or the data you are processing maybe you will find hardware has better performance again okay so only issue is maybe our memory allocation may fail let's see okay no issues so now software begins 25883 and hardware is 1841 so 25883 so it's approximately again still close to 14 times so this is the real advantage of hardware okay so it's approximately 14 times faster now you may feel like uh, the software has some disadvantage because software processing i am doing byte by byte here in the for loop here you can see I'm taking one byte at a time and subtracting it with uh, from 255 but in the hardware my interface is 32 bit interface so I'm taking four bytes at a time and uh, doing the processing so maybe for better comparison in software also we need to do 32 bit processing instead of one byte at a time so that you can do we were doing one byte at a time because I was allocating memory using u8 and uh, i'm multiplying with file size to get the total instead of u8 you can allocate memory at u32 that means size of u32 will return me 4 now same image there is no difference in the resolution so instead of file size which is basically the sum of these two which is returning me the size in byte this time i'm allocating using four byte in one shot so this will become one by fourth of that right and this image data now should be declared as a pointer to 32 bit data because i am allocating using u32 so i have to modify my for loop 
4. It will like uh, header size by 4. Basically, you have to divide everything by 4 because you are allocating at 32 now. Image size of i is rex f f f f f f f f. You are processing 4 bytes at a time. So each time i is incrementing, now it is representing a 32 bit data not an 8-bit data because your allocation is at uh, 4 bytes, u32. So same way you have to modify here also, header size by 4, header size by 4. This image size, this you don't have to modify because for DMA you have to specify size in number of bytes, not in number of 32 bits or d words we say okay so this doesn't change because the size in bytes is still this one but here in the array representation each element now represents four bytes so that's why i'm modifying it here okay that's it so let's save and try to run once more Okay, so now for, for U32, memory is failing, is not able to allocate using U32 this much, but actually it's the same amount of memory, again some internal system details, so let me go back to the original size of 512 by 512. Okay, so this is the numbers I'm getting. Now if I take the ratio 7671 divided by 464, it is 16 and a half. Okay, so it seems like half hours became worse when I am processing it at uh, D word level or using 32 bits. Again, this will be due to internal internal architecture details, how data is fetched from the memory, how processor is extracting one byte from 32 bits, things like that. So we really don't worry about that in this course. But the main takeaway is the hardware performance is much better than the software performance. Now, I can further improve my hardware performance if I increase the clock frequency at which my IP is running. Maybe I will get better performance. Remember, we are running at 100 megahertz. But I can change that frequency up to 250 megahertz, provided I can satisfy all the timing requirement. That may increase my performance. Another thing, currently we are working in the polling mode. So for DMA, we are constantly checking the status register to check whether the DMA transfer is over or not. Again, that will be consuming some time, this constant checking. Instead of that, if we go with the intra-based mechanism, which we will discuss later, maybe my performance will improve again okay i will have better performance so this is what is motivating us to go for hardware implementation of uh, ip course because of their performance because of the improvement that they give in terms of throughput but maybe there are some application where hardware is not that great especially applications where you have a lot of control, okay, which are control intensive rather than data in intensive. Things like you have a lot of evals if condition, maybe their uh, software may be better than hardware. Okay, so so that's it. So I hope this motivates you to focus more on hardware development because they are giving much better performance. Thank you.